In the last year or two, AI has gotten the reputation for helping you brainstorm ideas and automate tasks. But can AI actually help you learn something new? That's what we're going to figure out today. I'm Blondie Bites. I'm a back-end engineer, and I feel like I should know a little more about the front end than I actually do. All I know is I send them some JSON, and they make it look nice and pretty, but that's about it. There are frameworks and SDKs that client engineers use. One in particular is called Flutter, which is used for building cross-platform applications. So I'm wondering if I can use AI to learn Flutter and build a simple web app with it. To do this, we're going to be using Google's AI-powered IDE called IDX. It lives in the browser and we'll be using its AI tools to try to make a basic Flutter app. Let's get into it. So Project IDX has different templates for different tech stacks. And so we are going to choose Flutter. We'll call it my Flutter app and click create. IDX will set up our workspace and our environment. To write our Flutter app, we'll be using the Dart programming language. So I'll click yes for these VS Code settings. But what am I going to do with this lib main.dart? Like what, where do I even start in learning? how to work with a Flutter application. Well, in IDX, there is an AI that we can start conversations with. And so it's this code actions button at the top. Here we can ask any question about Flutter, any question about Dart, and really try to build on this application that the template gave us. Let's see if this AI can explain the file structure of the app. So it looks like the main.dart file is the main entry point of the app. And when this runs, it will run my app and it has a build method that returns a material app widget. So it seems like widgets are going to be the components in a Flutter application. And this is different because this is a stateful widget. And so this is saying this widget represents the home page of the application. The state we have is a counter. So this is something we're probably keeping track of is some counter. And then the counter is incremented when this method is called. And this state, it looks like it has a build method also associated with that, where it's building an app bar and components associated with this counter. So in order to preview this application, when we opened up the template, it had this web page. And so this will allow us to preview the app. So let's click this button. And there's that state changing on the home page. I want to change something with it. So let's ask it, what can I change easily? So we'll ask for a recommendation. If I just want to make a simple code change, what is something I could change? We could change the theme property to change your, the overall look and feel of this. And so instead of deep purple, let's do like a light blue. We could also change this to instead of increment, we could do like add one, change the name of that. That's enough change. So let's go back to the web. And now it's this light blue. Um, you push this button many times. That looks like it maps to this widget with the text. And it looks like this tooltip didn't really change anything. So let's ask, what is tooltip used for? So a tooltip is a small pop-up that displays a short message when the user hovers over or long presses an element. So if I hover over the button, it says add one, whereas before, if I hovered over it, it probably would have said increment. So that's like, this, this is actually really cool because I'm querying documentation on the fly. I don't have to go look at some big long document in order to get this to work because I just ask it, what is the tooltip? What is that? I don't know. And then it tells me. Now this was kind of basic. Most of the changes we made dealt with the, uh, the look of it. So we changed the color, we changed a few text things, but I think the best way to learn something new is by practicing. And so what else could we do this application that more changes the logic of it, that completely changes how it works? Well, we're gonna try to change this into a dice roll app. So still a basic application, but through this, we should be able to learn some new things about Flutter and keep with that. So let's ask it, what code do I need to change 
to turn this into a dice roll app. I wonder where this Flutter demo homepage is coming from. Ah, here it is. We'll change that to dice roller. And then it says create a staple widget called my P dice page state. So that's gonna be our my homepage state. And this is the core logic that we're gonna copy. And so instead of a counter, we're gonna have a dice value that will start off at one because the dice, you can't roll to zero. And we're gonna have a method called roll dice. The state will set the dice value and that dice value is gonna be a random number. And we're gonna say next int six plus one. So hopefully this works similar to Java where it generates a random number that's zero to five. And so this is exclusive. And then we add one to give it that number one to six. And then it's giving us an error about this random. We probably have to import something. So we're gonna import something from dart.math. And th this is the logic. So it looks like set state, typically, whatever logic we want to happen, whatever values we want to change when we reset the state for something, that is what we put in here. And then we have the build, which is how something is going to be shown on the page. And here it's saying we have the app bar with our widget.title. So that's going to be the dice roller that we passed through. And then we have children. Here it thinks I'm gonna have like a dice image, but I don't have those. And so we are just gonna display the number and that number is just gonna be the dice roll. What do we call it? The dice value. And then we'll change that header. Your dice roll is dot, dot, dot. Dice. I am curious about scaffold. Like what is a scaffold? What are the different components? Here the app bar seems to be this thing at the top. And then the body, here we're saying we want it centered. We're gonna have a column within that and it's gonna be a child of the main body. We're gonna give it this alignment. And within that, we're gonna have this button. And then when we press that button on the side, I want it to be rolling the dice. And so we'll do roll dice because that's the name of our method. Roll the dice. And for our icons, that plus button doesn't really work for us. So let's see what other icons exist. There are so many icons and there's not a single one for like a dice roll. So you know what we could do? Let's say dot add. We could ask our AI what icon we should use. What icon should I use from icons dot to represent a button to roll the dice? Let's go casino. Oh, there is a casino one. So maybe we'll do casino and we'll want to roll the dice, not rice. Okay, so the first dice roll is we put our thing off at one and oh, this, this casino icon actually looks really nice. So let's roll it. We get five, we get six, we get four, three, six. All of these look pretty good. We just converted a counter app into a dice roll app with no experience with Flutter, we only used IDX's AI in order to generate this code and learn more about it. We asked questions when we got stuck and we used our just basic software development knowledge in order to query the AI and make this app. So that's it for this video. This was one of my first times using IDX and I really enjoyed it. This IDX AI was super useful and the fact we got that template to start off with to try to learn something new was also really, really cool. So if you wanna try it out for yourself, use the link down in the description and start making your apps with IDX. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy coding.